Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze, there's a bar in far Bombay. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. Come fly with me. All right, so we're back to the third annual symposium on corporate oppression. I fully planned for a few technical glitches because I don't see why this would be any different from when I appear in court over Zoom or at a mediation or in a deposition and everything goes awry the second you turn it all on. So we heard the baby crying. I think we heard some lawyer jokes in the background, so that was good. Maybe someone can complete the punchline a little later on. Um, but as I was saying, it's, it's, it's great to be here in Grand Rapids at Forts Legal for the third annual symposium on corporate oppression. I'm so excited that we have over 25 strong speakers. I mean, these are people you're really gonna wanna hear talk if you're involved in business law or, and I looked on the roster tonight, we have several um, business owners uh, in, in, in attendance, virtually of course. And um, I tell you what, if I was their majority partner, I'd be concerned about them coming to this business divorce seminar. Um, so we have law professors and law students with us tonight too uh, because the State Bar opened up the registration for the program to the law students. So the title of the program is Oppression in the Age of the Pandemic. And I've gotten the question over and over, well, what should we speak about? What, what does the pandemic, you know, how should we fit it in? Well, the answer to that is the pandemic really affects everything. It's why we're doing this virtually tonight. And on a positive note, it's why we were able to get so many people able to speak, not having to deal with the logistics of actually going somewhere to do it. So in that sense, it's great. Now, what's the effect of the pandemic uh, on business, uh, businesses and partnerships? Because that's particularly what we're here uh, to talk about tonight, how we litigate, how we manage uh, the fiduciary component, component of a business relationship. Well, the pandemic has a way of peeling back fictions that businesses might have been living in uh, prior to an era when we have to tighten our belts like never before, where very difficult decisions need to be made, where there's restructuring, where uh, the perception that a change that might have needed to occur in the future because the status quo was okay is no longer there. And partnership disputes will rise as a result of this. So will, uh, so have risen, I, I've seen it with my own eyes. There's a lot of situations with employees and litigation is, is blowing up um, in, in, in that area. And um, the par partnership relationship, the fiduciary relationship is no exception uh, to the effect that the pandemic is in business. So uh, the structure of tonight's agenda, uh, is designed to track, in a rough way, the progress of the case. Where I'm, I'm making some introductory remarks for a little while, principally, so we can get the technical glitches worked out, so that when four o'clock hits, we can go bang, 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 and get all these uh, different programs in before eight o'clock tonight, and then again uh, tomorrow night on uh, night two. So we're going to start with a round table. And the roundtable is going to discuss the pre-filing due diligence that goes into these types of cases, corporate governance and early discovery strategies. Uh, you'll hear R.J. Cronkite, Bernie Fuse, Tom Frizee, Sean Fitzpatrick uh, speak on this, and I'll moderate that roundtable. Then we're going to move into the second roundtable, which will discuss mediation and negotiation, negotiation strategies, which are so important not just at the tail end of a case or in the thick of a case, but right at the beginning, because as we know, the business courts do um, tend to refer these matters to, to mediation uh, quite swiftly. And we'll hear mediators, John Frank, David Hansma, and Bill Winston speak on those issues, and the round table moderator will be E. Powell Miller. Then we'll do our third and final round table for the night on trial preparation and trial strategies. And in that roundtable, we'll hear from Norman Ankers, John Velo, E. Powell Miller, H. Joel Newman, and Ian Williamson. The moderator will be Bernie Fuse. 
And we're gonna move into the lectures for the evening. And we're gonna hear from two professors, Professor Douglas Mall from the University of Houston Law Center and Professor Eric Zacks from the Wayne State University Law School. Uh, Professor Mall will give us uh, an overview of oppression law, kind of a landscape. And Professor Zacks will discuss an interesting rule uh, that we all should know and know well, the business judgment rule and the pleading standards and how it applies at the pleading, uh, early pleading phase of the case. And then we'll hear some dialogue with the two professors uh, from 6.50 to 7.10. And uh, we'll have two more lectures to round out the evening. Bill Winston will speak, will give us the backstory of a very important case on corporate usurpation, production finishing versus shields. It's a case that we see cited often um, in the context of when a majority partner or even a minority partner makes off with a business opportunity. I had the opportunity to discuss his involvement in that case uh, during a mediation a while back and I thought uh, we could all benefit from that and enjoy it. And Ian Williamson will close the night uh, discussing the oppression study project, which is um, going on right now and could affect the contours of uh, uh, statutory um, and possibly case law precedent uh, in this area. So moving on, like I said, can we go to the next slide, please. I'm not sure if the baby crying drowned me out, but I was saying before that this is a symposium. And in a symposium, we really, really encourage audience participation. Join the discussion. Um, unfortunately, your comments won't be anonymous. I think, will we see their names when they post up there? Okay, your names will, will post, so you know, keep it, keep it clean. Uh, we know who you are. Uh, so, uh, the uh, definition of a symposium here. Uh, number three, an account of the discussion meeting or of the conversation at it. A convivial meeting for drinking, drinking. How did that get in there? Would anybody really drink? behind their screens at home in a symposium. Um, well, if anybody comes tonight, they will see a bar over here, which I'll stay far away from as the symposium host. I think I, I owe it to the group, but uh, we'll be inviting uh, everyone here to imbibe and also enjoy the, um, the catering from Carolina Low Country Kitchen, which we've had the last two years and uh, which is a great, great restaurant. So join the discussion. Let's hear your voices. You're as important as the speakers here tonight, and um, maybe even smarter than a few of them. Um, actually, I just speak for myself. Um, so if we could go to the next slide. This is the man uh, who would be smiling down if he sees us in this symposium tonight, Benjamin Cardozo. He, um, he wrote the famous lines that we heard all of our corporate law professors um, uh, say, and if we had uh, people in the room here tonight, uh, I'd, I'd quiz you on what the case name was, but I can't do that unless anybody wants to put it in the, ch uh, in the chat box, but it's Meinhard versus Salmon. And he authored that when he was on the, I always get the New York courts confused, but the highest court in New York. And uh, he wrote there of the punctilio of the honor, the most sensitive. And those words, those words should really strike fear in fiduciaries because fiduciary status, fiduciary duty, it's a beautiful thing, uh, but it's also a very dangerous thing when you're being held to that standard. And the statutes that have been written since, in my opinion, all flow from the language uh, that we'll see on the next slide. And um, I'm not gonna read it all, but there's some things in there that are particularly noteworthy to keep in mind when you're litigating this case, both from a plaintiff side and from a defense side too. And it's really what that standard of fiduciary conduct is and how very, very difficult it is to prove in a court of law that it's been adhered to. Now it can be done, but the problem for defense, uh, for the defense in these situations is you probably don't get past summary disposition or summary judgment if you're in federal court, unless you can prove that there was no fiduciary relationship to begin with. Because the language from which the uh, 
uh, precedents and, and, and the applications of these statutes, um, the, the language of Justice Cardozo in this seminal case, adopted by the Michigan uh, courts, um, indicates that fairness and honesty and doing the right thing in arm's length transactions and even the mores or the morals of the marketplace are not good enough. You can live up to all of those standards and be all of those things. And if you're a fiduciary, you can uh, be, um, become embroiled in litigation that may or may not come out your way, but lasts a long, long time and costs a lot of money. Uh, if we can flip to the next slide, please. And there it is, not honesty alone, but the punctilio of an honor the most sensitive is then the standard of behavior. Flip it over. And, there, and there's even more of it. Um, and so those, those are the words the plaintiff's lawyer in these fiduciary cases live by. Those are the standards that the fiduciaries are being held to. And whether this precedent or the, this, this statement is being applied, what we see are the principles and policies that flow out of them being embodied in statutes around the country. Our statutes here in Michigan are uh, section 1489, and if I get this right, 4515 or 1542. I can't remember the LLC one. But what those statutes did when they were enacted is they created direct causes of action. And we'll hear some of our speakers talk about the differences between direct causes, derivative causes, the business judgment rule, how that intersects, and how we plead our case. In the pleading of the case, the prosecution of the case, starting with the pre-filing due diligence, is so important. And that's why we're starting in our first round table with a discussion concerning the pre-filing work that we can do here. The beauty of uh, the corporate statutes is that we're not limited to litigation. There are moves that can be made before we enter a litigation. Corporate demands for documents, demands for meetings at which records can be made and questions can be asked. Uh, and all the rules under the corporate governance documents. And you can quasi litigate your case before filing litigation, which is something that uh, I find is, is very, very useful to initiate a discussion that could ultimately lead to a resolution in the matter rather than running right down to the courthouse. When we get to the courthouse, we have a lot of people slated to talk tonight who can explain to us how the legal arguments work, how we apply our facts. And then tomorrow night, uh, we'll spend a lot of time listening to judges uh, talk about it from their perspectives uh, from behind the bench. So with respect to logistics tonight, um, if you have any problems, call Forts Legal. I'm gonna give you that number right now, meaning if you get kicked out or you can't get logged in, and that number is 844-730-4066. And they'll be able to help you with any issues you have because they're, they're, bound, they're bound to arise. So um, could we test the chat boxes right now and see if we can have somebody log in and we can get a little comfortable with seeing those? or we'll, we'll work on that, um, just to get it going. Because part of this introduction is just to smooth out all the tech issues. There we go. All right, so people are chatting. All right, so that's working and that is up. And anybody can feel free to use it at any time. So if we can go to the next slide, please. All right, before we pause and let everybody get ready and have our first speakers join the program, I just wanted to make a few thank yous. First, since we're here on Veterans Day or Armistice Day, as it used to be called, the thanks goes out to the armed services. And um, I'd like to thank the State Bar of Michigan. So basically what that is, is... Um, well, and in particular, Terry Shoup. Susan Udes Udsema, Andrew and Andrew Marks uh, for helping us with the marketing of this program. They did a great job. Uh, the Wayne State Uni University Law School, uh, which is co-sponsoring this event, and uh, Tish Browning, 
who every year serves as the liaison uh, with the law school for this program and uh, in non-pandemic times uh, coordinates the uh, production of the Detroit uh, program at Wayne State University. Margot Hyman and Cassandra Lee from the Wayne State University Business Journal, who's also sponsoring this program, and Eric Zach for agreeing to speak tonight from Wayne State University Law School. Thank Carolina Low Country Kitchen for providing the food. PJ Muir Productions, whose voice you'll hear over and over tonight uh, as he helps us transition from one program to the next and give introductions and constant reminders to chime in and, um, and direct the di discussion through our chat function. Uh, and of course, Fort's Legal for hosting this event as it does every year in Grand Rapids and also the lawyers back at my law firm who uh, given countless hours to uh, putting this uh, production together. Uh, so thank you all very much uh, for joining tonight. Uh, look forward to hearing from you and we'll have a uh, pause for how long? What time is it? Let's see. About, five minutes. About five minutes we'll be uh, ready to go with the first round table. So thank you very much. Let's take off in the blue. Once I get you up there Where the air is rarefied We'll just glide Starry-eyed Once I get you up there I'll be holding you so 